What's up guys, I am here at Seattle Tacoma International Airport in Washington in the northwest of the USA. If you want to know how I've got here, check out my previous videos with Virgin Atlantic and Alaska Airlines. They were fantastic flights, I really enjoyed them. But now it's time to head home. I was looking at prices in business class to fly back to the UK from here in Washington and British Airways wanted over £3,000 for that flight. I just wasn't going to pay three grand for a flight from Seattle back to the UK. So I checked out the other options and Norwegian Air offered the service over to Gatwick. They don't have a business class cabin though, it's just in premium economy, but today I'm going to be finding out if it really is a match for business class. So let's head inside to the terminal and we'll find out. Check in. Okay, great, thank you. Thanks, Bye -bye. Premium economy passengers have access to the priority line here at Seattle Airport. Norwegian have recently changed their lounge access policy, so I headed up to the club lounge at SEA, try my luck and see if I could get into the lounge. Fortunately, I was allowed into the lounge with my premium Hello, economy man. ticket Hi. today, but Norwegian have recently changed their policy on this and stopped anybody on premium economy from getting into the lounges. Fortunately, however, they let me through, but next time I don't think I'll be quite so lucky. The club lounge at SEA is, however, covered by Priority Pass, so if you remember, you can get in, just like you can to over 1,200 airport lounges all around the world, regardless of which airline or class of travel that you're flying in. Check out the link in the description below for a discount off a membership with them. This area here at Seattle could best be described as a completely disorganised chaos. There were two flights going from the same gate, a Delta Airlines flight and the Norwegian flight that I was going to be taking. I don't think even the gate staff had the slightest clue what was going on here, so it was just a whole mass of people waiting to get onto two different flights. Around half an hour after they called us for boarding, finally we were allowed to go through the gate. Thank you. Yep. Today we were over at a bus gate, which is something that really frustrates me. I know as an aviation geek I should really enjoy the opportunity, but when we get to the aircraft you'll see quite why it wasn't as good as it was made out to be. When we got to the aircraft, I saw something that I've never seen before. They use this really weird kind of boarding bridge thing. It means that you don't actually get to walk up the steps at the side of the plane. It's just like three ramps up to the aircraft. It is really strange and everybody was basically allowed to board at the same time, regardless of whether they were premium or not. We did get to walk really close to those massive 787 engines though. premium cabin here on the Norwegian Dreamliner is in a 232 layout. The seats are actually pretty spacious but as you'll see a little bit later on they're not the most comfortable in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Here you can see all the other passengers finding on their way up this really crazy jet bridge thing that they use. The weird ramp thingy was pulled away from the aircraft and we were soon ready to push back and get on our way to London. We were held in a massive queue before departure, there must have been about 20 aircraft ahead of us as we made our way down the parallel taxiway to the end of the runway to take off. Today then took us to the northeast out of Seattle and across Canada towards Hudson Bay. We crossed Hudson Bay and then went across into the Labrador Sea, across the southern tip of Greenland and then down across the Atlantic towards Northern Ireland. Once we hit the UK it was down across Birmingham and into London Gatwick Airport with a total flight time today of 9 hours and 9 minutes at a cruising altitude of 39,000 and 41,000 feet. Within half an hour of taking off, we were getting some great views across the Rocky Mountains in Canada. Let's take a quick look around the seat on today's flight. Like I said earlier, it's pretty spacious, but it isn't the most comfortable in the world. In one arm of your seat is the television screen, which pops out like this. I'll talk you through the IFE system a little bit later on in the flight. Down in the armrest, there's a remote control for this as well, so you can change the channel and the volume and things like that. And in front of the seats in between the two there is a three pin power plug with the life vest located just underneath it. It's where the table pops out of the armrest a little bit like this. And it kind of folds in two just like that. In the side of the seat there's a USB socket and in the front of the armrest there's a couple of buttons that you can use to set the recline, put your seat back and forwards and also to pop out your little footrest that's down below. Standard Boeing Dreamliner windows here as well that tint when you press the button instead of having an actual window shade. I've mentioned it before but I do actually really like this setup. And you can 
can see here just how dark the windows go compared to the ones that are open. There's also a little footrest that pops out down below like that. It's just not very comfortable if you're quite tall like me. About an hour after takeoff, the crew came around offering our food, which is something I was looking forward to seeing. I took a glass of wine which came in a plastic cup Thank you. and it was followed shortly after by a rather unceremoniously dumped meal pulled straight out of a cardboard box in the seat at the side of me. And here is what is inside that box, so it doesn't look the greatest, I have to admit. It's essentially just an economy class meal shoved in a cardboard box. I've chosen the chicken today, which wasn't too bad tasting. Norwegian do offer free Wi-Fi on their flights, which I logged on to and was able to get a download speed of about 3 meg, but upload was absolutely non-existent, which is probably because it's satellite internet on this aircraft. Let's take a little look through the in-flight entertainment system, and it pops out from the armrest as I showed you earlier on and has a nice big touch screen like this. There's quite a few movies and TV shows that you can watch on here, nothing that I really fancied watching and they didn't actually provide me with any headphones, you would have had to use your own, although I'm not sure if they give them to you on request or not. You can supposedly order food and drink to your seat from the in-flight entertainment system but everything I ordered never turned up. This was to set the tone for the rest of the flight really as you'll find out a little bit later on. The flight map was pretty good. It gave you quite a nice overview of the route that we were taking and all the landmarks that were around us. I actually thought that the kids map idea was a really good idea. It shows you where the aircraft is on the map and you can look at the wildlife from the area that you're flying over. It's quite educational and if you're travelling with kids this is a really cool thing to do. But it doesn't actually show many animals on the map so I think they'd soon get pretty bored. dinner it was time for me to dim my window shade and try and get some sleep on this overnight flight back to the UK. You are given quite a nice little blanket but that's about it, there's no pillows or anything that you can take.
space, there's plenty of space. Um, it's very spacious to see, as you'd expect for premium economy. It's just that the seat is just so damn uncomfortable. The size of the seat, the armrests are so high and fixed so you can't lift them up and get comfortable that way. They don't give you any pillows so you kind of stop being a contortionist into this bloody terrible seat. This is not a fun, comfortable ride at all. I know it's kind of better than it would have been in economy but this isn't economy, this is premium economy. And to say if this is what premium economy is like then I'm not a massive fan to be honest. At least in economy you can kind of strip it spread out a little bit if you've got somebody no you don't have something on the side of you. But never mind. We've got about another six or seven hours to go. We're kind of somewhere over in northern Canada at the moment. At the moment it looks like we're going to be arriving into Gatwick. Very tired and very grumpy indeed. <laughs> this is not a great flight. Okay, so a bit of an update then. We're now about an hour and a half away from landing at Gatwick Airport over the Atlantic Ocean, kind of somewhere between Iceland and Northern Ireland at the minute on that little bit of the Atlantic. Really not slept well at all on this flight, I've had a couple of hours, it's so really not a comfortable flight. Um, and I've not seen any of the crew like, since we had dinner last night. It's a good six hours since I've seen anybody from the crew. I don't know where they all are. Um, if they are all... <laughs> presumably they're all getting a little bit more sleep than um, we have done. And the crew rest or something. I've not seen any um, cabin crew whatsoever. They've not been around with drinks or anything, which is a little bit frustrating, really. I would expect at least them to pop around every like, half an hour to an hour or so with a drink, but I've not seen them. I would expect to see them like every now and then just to offer drinks and things, but I haven't seen anybody, so <laughs> it's not brilliant. But I suppose you have to remember this is a low cost airline at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, low cost is never going to be the same as a full service carrier, but um, anyway, I'm going to freshen up a little bit. Got about an hour and a half, I'd say, to Lampley and Gatwick. Hopefully I sleep on the train on the way back because I have much sleep on this flight at all. And that was it, there was no more sleep to be had on the rest of this flight. About an hour before landing, the cabin crew finally emerged from whatever hole they'd been hiding in and came around to give us some breakfast. Well, at least that's what they called it. I am honestly still flabbergasted even when I look at the video of this now. I have no idea what food this was that they served me up, so I can't really help you. I can just say it wasn't the tastiest and I had a really deserved McDonald's breakfast as soon as I landed at Gatwick.
Using the Wi-Fi on board, I was able to track my flight on Flight Radar 24 as we were flying down the UK on approach in towards London. And with that, we made an approach and landing down into a really miserable and grey London Gatwick Airport. The flight today cost me £509.90 which rather strangely works out to exactly 666 US dollars. That makes a total price of 11 pence per mile. I didn't think this flight was particularly good value for money. And for sure I've had worse value for money, especially when flying in business class that isn't really business class. And to be honest this was only ever sold as a premium economy flight so I shouldn't really be complaining. I was really pleased to finally get off this aircraft and head back up to the Midlands where I could actually sleep in a decent bed. Don't get me wrong, in terms of value for money I didn't think Norwegian were that bad. It was certainly more comfortable in premium economy than it would have been down the back but the thing that really frustrated me was just how uncomfortable that seat was. It didn't really go into a comfortable position, there wasn't really any room to stretch out at all and to be honest for a passenger who was six foot two tall like myself it was really uncomfortable and not something I desire to do again. Next time I'll probably try my looking economy and see if I can get a rotor myself. My other issue with this flight was the crew or rather the lack of them for most of the flight. When we did see them they seemed really grumpy not in a very good mood there were barely any smiles to go round and that's when we actually could get to see them. They didn't bring any of the food that I requested. Call bells went unanswered. It was just really not that great. The crew really didn't seem like they were that bothered about working there. Of course, maybe this is only one crew and maybe they were having a bad day, but this is the flight that I have to judge it on. I've never flown on a Norwegian Dreamliner before. When I've flown on their 737s across the Atlantic, they've been pretty decent and pretty friendly. Maybe the Gatwick crew based out on the Dreamliners are a little bit different, I don't know. Have you flown with Norwegian long haul before and if so, what did you think to them? Please let me know down in the comments section below. So here back at Gatwick Airport in London on a beautiful, beautiful, actually, no, it's not beautiful. It's a very typically British day, very rainy, very foggy. But hey, I'm on the train, about to head back home. Interesting flight over with Norwegian, it was, not the most comfortable shall we say and i don't think i'll be rushing to fly with them again especially on the long haul route the short haul services are okay pretty decent but they send that dreamliner on a 13 hour flight to buenos aires that is just an insane trip in that cabin i mean it was bad enough for me on a nine hour imagine a 13. um certainly won't be looking at doing that anytime soon but I've done it now and um, hopefully you've enjoyed seeing what it's like and hopefully it's been useful to see what Norwegian are like. So as we leave Gatwick Airport railway station just want to say thanks very much for watching take care and I'll see you next time here on in-flight video.